Hello, and thank you for joining us on HIP New Jersey Stays Home, benefiting the New Jersey Pandemic Relief Fund. Tonight, you'll be entertained by some of the Garden State's top musicians, hear from your favorite local celebrities, and be inspired by messages from our fellow citizens as the Garden State looks to rebuild and reopen. What's happening, Jersey? It's your boy. That's right, Constantine Marullis, two-time Tony-nominated Broadway star, Rock of Ages, a little American Idol, but most importantly, a Greek boy from Jersey. That's right, I grew up in Wyckoff, New Jersey. So much love to you and your families. I hope everyone's staying safe and healthy during these crazy times, but Really, I want to shout out our heroes on the front line, all the amazing healthcare workers, the doctors, the nurses, everyone, the whole support staff. You guys are amazing. Please, please give what you can to the New Jersey Pandemic Relief Fund. Right now, you can go on the website, check it out, give what you can. Everything goes directly to people in need during this crazy crisis. Um, I hope you enjoy this next song. It's a song I wrote, Blown Away, from my upcoming album, Until I'm Wanted. Here's a little stripped down version of an unreleased song of mine, Blown Away. And I don't care 
Hey, this is Dana Jones from the New York Giants. As we go through such a difficult and trying time across our country and in our communities, I'd like to sincerely thank all the healthcare workers and first responders who are out on the front lines fighting this virus. Challenging times bring out the best in so many, and you all have risen to the occasion. Thank you so much for all you do. Darling, you ain't just another friend of mine. If you want me to, I will stand by you till the end of time. Mama says there's a whole lot of things I've been doing wrong. Month is through and the rent is due and the money's all gone. Everything we need is within us. You would only look and see. All you need's a little faith and oh. Healthcare workers have labored through marathon hours. They have faced excruciating circumstances, life or death decisions, risking their own lives and those of their loved ones, all in hopes of their patient's recovery. These frontline heroes are the true definition of Jersey Strong. Once I started working on the COVID units in the hospital uh, and I saw uh, what this virus did to these patients, and what was capable of, um, it was unbelievable. And what I mean by that is um, it was very unpredictable. Our administrative team did a wonderful job and they asked a very pointed question. And that was, how do we keep our staff 
and how do we keep our patients safer? And every day we ask that question over and over again. The most challenging emotionally for all of us was the following. My family member is gonna die alone. We went outside and spoke to family members in the waiting room with full gear on. We went outside to cars and spoke to family members. That was the most difficult. And that is what's sticking with the majority of us. Most of us haven't seen death like this um, ever in our careers. Not with the density with a certain time frame. None of us. We've all seen um, difficult times, but we have not seen the proportion of death that um, that we've seen during this. Um, I'm going to cheer up because I know how hard the staff has been working. And just one little thing as a nurse, one little thing that someone can do for you or can recognize you, it, it makes a difference. It raises people's spirits. It, it, it lets people know that when they're wrapped in PPE and they're hot and they're uncomfortable and they're at the patient's bedside, patients didn't have family members with them during this time. So they were oftentimes the patient's family. And all they could see, all the patients could see were their eyes because they're covered in, in masks and PPE. And it was a way for us to say to them, to these, to these caregivers that we thank you for doing that hard work and for not only taking good physical care of the patients, but you were their emotional support during this time. You were their people during this time. We've come a long way. We still have a ways to go with vaccines, uh, testing. But the hospitals are prepared. Elective surgeries are starting next week. Uh, so that, that's an important message. That it's safe to come back. I think we'll get through it. We've gotten through this far. I think um, it's amazing what I've seen. And I think we'll, 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 we're all going to be okay from this. To all of the New Jersey essential workers, I want to say a deep, heartfelt thank you. Thank you for your service, for your dedication and commitment. We love you and we're all in this together. Amazing grace, how sweet the sound that saved a wretch like me. But now I'm found, was blind, but now I see. Hi, this is Vincent Curatola, Johnny Sack from The Sopranos. I'm a New Jersey guy, born and bred. I still live here. We want to say many thanks to all of the people who work 24 hours a day, keeping us safe. Please show your appreciation by making donations to njprf.org. I wrote this song called, We're All Together. Uh, we certainly are in this together. Uh, so I'll give it a shot.
Yes, I'm in misery, but we're all together, so please, can't you see? Hi, I'm Bobby Brown, founder of Beauty Evolution. There are many ways to help, and if you are able, consider donating to the New Jersey Pandemic Relief Fund. 100% of your donations will go toward the state's most needy and vulnerable population. Go to njprf.org to learn more. Thank you. New Jersey's first responders are committed to excellence in preserving public safety. They work tirelessly to protect and promote the health of all citizens and have maintained a strong sense of community, even six feet apart. The difference I would say with Sandy and 9-11, it occurred and then we were doing recovery instantly. This is fluid, it's constantly going. Uh, personally speaking, in the law enforcement community, we saw people my age, Newark, a lot of officers who I knew, Past sadly, and again, the closure thing, we're not, we're, we're human as police officers. It does hurt. But I am proud to report that overall, our police, fire, and emergency management employees are doing an extraordinary job in serving the community during this pandemic. I've been here, what, 22 years? I've never seen anything like this. And I think everyone else could attest to that same thing. So it, it's a learning curve and it's an educating curve on our end and on our, uh, our community's end. The biggest thing is trying to keep motivation uh, during a, an emergency that has unlimited time. So that's something we've never faced. I mean, Fairfield's faced a number of emergencies, floods and, and other things, but nothing like this. We've been keeping up with um, a lot of birthday uh, drive-by requests for kids in the town. Um, we've really felt that it's important to, you know, within the constraints of the executive orders, try to do everything that we possibly can to still do those types of things. You know, it's, we gotta do what we gotta do to, to make people smile right now, however we can and it's definitely worth it. Something that made a community come together, made a country come together, I hope. Um, and you know, together we're gonna get through it. It's the understandable that people want to get out of their homes to enjoy the warm weather. But we urge everyone to continue wearing masks and gloves and to keep practicing social distancing. Please be smart and stay safe and stay strong.
Thank you. During this challenging time, it's easy to feel overwhelmed and worried. But now more than ever, identifying ways to manage our mental health is crucial. Luckily, there are many resources around New Jersey that are able to help. We're probably one of the largest shelter systems in the state of New Jersey. Uh, we also have uh, re residential group homes as well. So we have a lot of people coming to see us just in those two areas. It's different from any disaster we've ever been through. This is not like a hurricane, a flood, a fire. This feels very different and people are worried about their health, the health of their family, um, our frontline workers, especially we're providing a lot of support to them. You know, just that fear and worry and anxiety is what we're seeing a lot of. We have our hotline, um, which is 1-866-202-HELP. And this is a place where people can get immediate emotional support. Um, it's operating seven days a week, 12 hours a day. And this is a great way for people to immediately get connected just to talk to someone um, and get support. But also if they do need a referral for more traditional mental health services, we can provide that also. Moving your body and exercise is so important for mental health. And especially like I say to my kids, I'm like, you guys just let it all go. I hope we come out a little more mindful of what's going on in the world, honestly, and what's going on with ourselves. We've seen a lot of good, so I really hope that continues. Hi, Vic DiBetetto here. I just want to give a shout out to all the essential workers who are working around the clock to make sure we are healthy and safe. Please donate to the New Jersey Pandemic Relief Fund. 100% of the donations will go towards the Garden State's most needy and vulnerable population. Donations can be made online to njprf.org. Thank you. Um, this is a song called In the Afternoon Tomorrow. Train to go. 
Hi, it's Melissa Gorga, and I just really wanted to come out and give a huge, huge thank you to all of our essential workers. Everyone needs to remember and please try your best, every little bit counts, to make a donation to the New Jersey Pandemic Relief Fund. Donations can be made online at njprf.org. You know I never, I never see you look so good You never act the way you should But I like it And I know you like it too The way I want you I gotta have you Oh yes I do I never, I never ever stay out of Just to see you And I know you well I'll wait Wait to see me too I gotta touch you Cause baby we'll be At the drive there In the old man's book In my manhood chairs Till I'm screaming the more of the COVID-19 pandemic, New Jersey citizens rose to the occasion. They recognized that through tragedy, there was also great opportunity to make a positive impact. Let's meet some of the people behind these grassroots charitable initiatives. Our area has the second most COVID-19 patients along with our emergency department being the third busiest in the country. I wanted to support our doctors and nurses and created Food for Heroes. I have teamed up with my sister, Kim Donofrio of Kim's Cafe and Catering to send meals to our tremendous healthcare workers. Every week it's been a, it's been a different uh, location. I've been delivering to 
St. Joseph's Hospital. I've been to Valley Hospital. We honored frontline workers and essential workers, my husband being one of them, which was the inspiration behind it. I mean, he, he goes off to work every morning and we hug as if he was going off to war. I really believe during a crisis like this, you have to de-emphasize your discomfort and there's no better way of doing that than focusing on people that are in the front lines with that efforts, I think we served close to 2,500 first-line responders in a short, maybe four to five week span. You know, lots of times you get a few items that can touch a few people, but in this case, we were able to take thousands and thousands of donuts into the hospitals. The hospital called and they said that they needed help. People donated food, people donated PPE, people donated flowers to bring up the spirits of the healthcare workers. And we raised in a month like $7,000 worth of food donation. We started a social campaign called Hearts for Heroes, where you just take a great picture of a heart or you make a craft and we tag other heroes on the front lines and we just show people who are giving back in these times that, you know, we're here for you, there's a community behind you. We put something together to, uh, you know, if you go fund me page which um, uh, the goal was to raise 50,000. You know, we're well over 60, I believe, uh, approaching 65,000 as of today. One of the other things that we have been able to have the privilege to do um, was to distribute over 125,000 pounds of produce, um, mixed fruits and vegetables boxes to frontline workers in hospitals throughout New Jersey and New York. People just are, so appreciative. We started realizing that we want to do good. We were just feeling really helpless, right? We're not frontline workers. But the one way that we could help is by collecting used smart devices, not only from, from us in our network, but also getting organizations to donate. I spoke to several of the faculty at the medical school where I was based at the time when they first started, and um, they loved the idea. They said that there's definitely a need not only for patients to be able to connect with their families, but also for providers to be able to um, engage in uh, to talk to the patients and limit exposure when it's not absolutely necessary to go into the patient room. While not having a smart device to connect with family isn't a human rights issue, suffering and dying without the ability to speak with family in isolation and alone, that very much is. At first impression, you might not think you can make an impact in something like COVID. You really can. And I'm really so proud. I'm always very proud of New Jersey. There's, there's a reason they say Jersey's strong. Hi, I'm Ross. Hey, I'm Luke. And I'm Calvin. We're the Happy Fits. We're from Pittstown, New Jersey, and we want to dedicate this song to all the essential workers out there risking their lives every day to keep society moving. This one's called Too Late. What?
2020 had a school year like no other. And while the circumstances were unfortunate, they're now battle tested to withstand any storm. Hola amigos, ¿cómo están? Espero que estén bien todos. Solo quiero decirle cómo el COVID-19 me ha afectado como estudiante en mi último semestre del cole. West Essex was getting ready to put on their spring musical, of which I was a part of, and we never came back. After our spring break, we were informed that the rest of the semester would remain online. All of our events were canceled and the requirements we had to finish by the end of the year were now unable to be completed. I started classes online, which made everything feel even more weird because part of being in art school is seeing people and collaborating. Realizar mi último semestre durante esta pandemia fue algo que nunca me imaginé. Fueron muchas noches de estrés al tiempo de entregar mis asignaturas y acostumbrarme a este nuevo cambio que no fue nada fácil. It's not, not any way I expected to be spending the last few months of senior year. My advice to the class of 2020 was to prepare to be lifelong learners. You can't really prepare for a career because many of the jobs that are going to exist 20 years from now haven't been invented yet. So you, you have to be flexible and adaptable and, and ready to uh, change with the times. Esto ha sido un gran reto que la vida no ha puesto, pero la clase del 2020 lo pudo superar. You know, stay strong, stay positive, and do what you can. I'm definitely excited to jump in and see what's out there. And I can gladly say that I finished my last semester in the middle of a pandemic with a 4.0. And, and it, it really is unfair in some respects. Uh, and I'm just so very proud of our 2020 graduates. They, they really have performed well under the great pressures of this pandemic. Yo sé que esto no me afecta solo a mí para varios estudiantes, pero no se compara con la cantidad de gente que hemos perdido. Solo quiero dar unas pequeñas palabras. Por favor, cuídense y cuiden a sus familia, familiares. What's up, everybody? It's Golden Tate with the New York Football Giants. Um, in spite of everything going on with this coronavirus and all the families and people affected by it, I just want to say thank you um, so much for the healthcare workers who are working night and day trying to keep this this awful virus under control. Um, God bless to everyone out there that's affected by it.
my name's David Burke, Chef David Burke, and uh, I, I want to sincerely thank all the essential workers in the state that are out there killing themselves and working for us hard and to help with funding and donations. That's njprf.org to help fund and help everybody that's out there. Or you could go to chefdavidburke.com and we will link you to that. Thank you. New Jersey's downtown districts are known for their premier shopping, dining, and entertainment options. In the wake of the crisis, community advocates are doing their part to help keep their neighborhoods thriving. Thousands of people go through our town on, on a daily basis. So not only are we losing revenue from the, from the COVID-19 in East Hanover, jobs are on hold, their jobs are lost. Unfortunately, small businesses actually had been struggling quite a bit prior to the pandemic. And so what this has now done, this environment, I think has caused a really big spotlight to be shown on, you know, the importance of small business. I do find that during times like this, um, well, A, you really remember what matters in your life and who matters in your life and that people really do come together to be positive and to try to support one another. I'm, I'm proud to say that I was extremely impressed uh, and happy that um, everyone came together and in, in their own way um, to make the best of a very bad situation. When things go back to, you know, quote unquote normal, I think um, we'll, all buildings, all restaurants will really um, start back up again. Um, I think we'll be just fine. This is Joe Beningo from WFAN. I just want to say, uh, you know, how proud I am as a Jersey guy uh, for everybody, everybody that's out there, uh, you know, working, 
in the face of all this and what a tremendous job they've done. At NJPRF.org to donate. Summer at the Jersey Shore may look a little different this year. However, Hurricane Sandy taught the world never to doubt the resiliency of our beloved shore towns. Beach towns are getting hammered right now. You know, you know, Manasquan, Point Pleasant, Seaside, Seaside Park. So all these, you know, beach towns that are waiting, been waiting and waiting for this time of year to happen. You know, struggling. We have a, a very tough, very resilient. Uh, constituency here in Point Pleasant Beach and throughout the shore. We're even planning things like pop-up programs uh, to fill some vacant buildings and vacant properties uh, so that we can keep that vibrancy going when we pull out of this pandemic. Here we are, you know, the building's open and I think that we will find a way. We've got employees here and we're making things move forward. President Lincoln talked about the fact that we needed to find what he called the better angels of our nature. These are all the people in the essential services who show up every day to make sure that we are able to continue to survive. I miss my clients dearly. <laughs> I've been doing some of them for 20 years. Getting all your clients back in, it's gonna be, uh, uh, I think it's gonna be emotional. It's gonna be great. <laughs> On George Rescue, we say it takes a village, and there is a lot of New Jersey people right now who really need the village to come together for them. A great way that we can help those who are on the front lines, who are the essential workers, is with the New Jersey Pandemic Relief Fund. NJPRF.org, donate what you can, help those who are helping all of us. This is my confession to you. Everything can fall apart. I fell apart so far. And all along you felt like letting go. And I didn't know enough. I didn't know. Take your breath away. And I didn't stay. I left you this so selflessly. Hold me close and I give me it. 
Small businesses are owned by our family, friends, and neighbors. They create jobs, support our communities, and donate to local charities. The COVID-19 crisis has threatened the heart and soul of our economy, but these New Jersey entrepreneurs are determined to keep their dreams alive. How it affected our businesses, how it affected our couples. These couples have been planning the most important day of their lives for the longest time. We've contacted people in the video business and, and worked with other officiants learning how to actually officially do these Zoom weddings. Thankfully, the governor has opened up provisions where people can get a license and we can uh, marry people in groups of less than 10. This happened just in March and that was a big hit for my business because every holiday is what makes my business successful. Every day when you listen to the reports from all the governors, you're hearing what can I do, what can I not do based on my business. So. I keep listening and just trying to adjust my business accordingly. We made up a private Facebook group and we started doing some live classes. They're honestly working out, if not the same, more. I think everybody's honestly going to be a little bit stronger from after this. Because everybody's on lockdown, a lot of people are cooking at home, um, which has actually been, been nice for our business, a little bit of a, a different, something that we weren't expecting at first to happen. COVID POV is a film that is currently in pre-production, production, and post-production. We saw a big need for somebody to document um, history. What I've been able to learn throughout this process is that I can pivot on a dime and um, that anything is possible. New Jersey 12, this is David Bryan for Bon Jovi. And I want to say thank you to all the doctors, the nurses, the first responders, all the delivery people, all the grocery store workers, everybody in the front lines helping everybody. Thank you. And remember, stay inside, stay safe. I offer my goodbye without compromise. Princess moving on beyond the ballistics, beyond the photographs. Fairy tale come and go. Will I shall do again? Stand in with you again. Is to not make news. Mother falls for pride. The prince is by her side and I find a heart.
thank you for joining us on HIP New Jersey Stays Home. For more on the New Jersey Pandemic Relief Fund and to donate, please visit njprf.org. On behalf of all of us here at HIP New Jersey, please stay healthy and safe.